Welcome to the Dream Big, My Friend podcast, where you will find all the inspiration you need to begin living a more intentional life today. Because no matter where you are right now in life, it's never too late to dream big, my friend. And now here's your host, Francis Vitakovic. Welcome, my friends, to this workshop. I am honestly so excited to be sharing this information with you today. This is all about five things that prevent you from living a life that you love and how to zap them or nip them in the bud ASAP, like today. That's what we want to do. Today, we want to nip these in the bud. So you will probably note that the title is all about the five things that prevent you from living a life that you love. And I want to note that the answer is not your kids, not your partner, not your work colleagues or siblings or parents. It is the things that you, my friend, are doing, things that you alone have the power to control and not outside influences, which technically don't have the power to impact your mood. Now, if this sounds crazy to you, just got to hear me out for a second. Now, I'm pretty sure that once upon a time, I probably would have put my money on the fact that it was everyone outside of me that had the power to control the direction of my life, the way that it was heading, and that they also had the power to influence my emotions because they were making me feel a certain way. That was what I used to think. And if only they changed, well, if they changed, everything would finally be sweet and I could finally be happy. But I promise you, other people cannot impact your thoughts and your moods. This workshop will help you put the power back where it belongs, which is in your hands. You don't want to give your power over to someone else, whether it's your partner or your kids or your family or your friends. This workshop is assuming that you know, and if you don't know yet, you're going to know by the end of this workshop, that you're in control of your own life and your own thoughts and your own feelings. And it really doesn't matter what else is happening around the world. So even if the whole world was falling apart around you, that in itself doesn't actually impact your potential to live a life that you love. The only thing that does hold that power is you, my friends, you and your thoughts, your thoughts and your actions, the actions that you take and how you choose to interpret all the situations that occur in your life. That is what's going to ultimately take you to where you want to go, you. But we're going to talk more about that later. Now, before we go any further, just allow me to quickly introduce myself to you. My name is Frances Vitakovic, and I am a blogger and an online course creator over at Inspiring Life Dreams. That's where I house all my parenting content. And dreambigmyfriend.com is where I put my personal development content. So I'm also the author of over 20 books, and I'm the host of the Dream Big My Friend podcast, which is all about helping mums dream bigger and live life with more intention and purpose. So surprise, surprise, I myself am a mum of two teens. So I have a 17-year-old daughter and a 14-year-old son, the latter who has a degenerative neuromuscular condition that requires him to use a wheelchair. Now, I only mention this because people often think, oh, okay, your life must be so perfect, and that's a reason why you can talk about personal development as if you're an expert, even though you've probably never experienced any real struggle in your life. And because your life is so easy, that's why you can have this conversation and try to tell me how I should do things. Now, I have to say the opposite is actually true for me. The difference with my approach when it comes to life and personal development and productivity and goal setting and intentional living is that I understand, I understand that I'm not perfect and I don't even pretend to be perfect. Instead, I am the first one to put up my hand and say that I am perfectly imperfect. Yes, I have a degree in psychology and I'm a certified life coach, but I'm also a fellow human with a human brain who understands from personal experience that life is full of challenges and that it takes conscious effort and practice daily to live life with more intention and purpose. So in case I haven't made that perfectly clear, I am your fellow perfectly imperfect human who simply aims to do her best when challenged in life. And yes, sometimes I fall short, but I always grant myself the grace to be a human and to try again and to forgive myself and be kind to myself during those challenging times. So what else should I share with you that's pretty important before we dig in? So I have been married for 20 years. I live in Sydney, Australia. And prior to starting my online business, I was actually a full-time certified life coach. So I actually undertook my training 20 years ago. I was one of the first certified coaches here in Australia. But that is enough about me. Let's go back to this goal of mine, which is to help you identify five things that prevent you from living a life you love and how to zap them immediately starting today. That's what I'm going to be sharing with you. Now, before we go on, I want to address this idea of what living a life you love even means. 
Now, I need to point this out that this phrase will mean different things to every single person in this world. So for some people, this might mean mean living a quiet life on a farm. Maybe you want to do arts and craft, attend to farm animals a day while spending time with your family and friends. Totally okay. That could be your dream life. And yet another person might think that it means building a successful business. Maybe it's to six figures that requires them ready to work three days a week. Or yet another person might envisage, you know, being an artist, living by the beach, soaking up the sunshine every single day. And yet another person might think it just means raising kids who are compassionate, resilient, independent, and confident. And here's the thing. You actually get to define whatever that phrase means to you. What does a life you love mean? And even better, this dream life will maybe even change for you over the years. So when I was younger, having this dream life meant the ability and flexibility to travel the world. Now that my kids are in high school, it means just living a simple life right now in Sydney where I can work from home and spend time with people that I love. And in the future, it's probably going to look different again. So just imagine that there's this famous quote by Mary Oliver who said, it's her question, Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? If she was to ask you that question, or if I was to ask you that question right now, which is what I'm doing, how would you answer it? Now, for the record, a life that you love doesn't mean that you have a life that is free from obstacles and hurdles. Because my friends, I have to tell you right now that we are all humans with human brains. We're going to experience a full range of human emotions. So both the negative ones and positive ones, we're going to have ups and downs and we can experience peaks and valleys. And 50% of the time, we're going to feel really great no matter what we're doing, even when we're living our dream life. And 50% of the time, we might not feel so great. And that is okay because it's totally normal. So for me, a life that I love right now means doing what I love with the people that I love. And also for me, it's important to embrace a sense of peace and calm. That's my goal. And you get to decide what your goal is. You can just make a decision about how you want to spend this precious time that we have on this precious planet with the one precious life that you have been gifted with and that you're so blessed to have. So I want you to give some thought to what your dreams are in this life. What's your purpose? What do you think that you will put on this earth to achieve? And could you possibly summarize it in a sentence or two? This means thinking about how you want to spend your days and where you want to end up in your life. When you come to the end of your life, what are the things that you'll be so glad that you did? And what are going to be your regrets? Like, it's really good to think about that question because when you know that potentially that's going to be your regret, then you can work to rectify that right now. So you don't have to live life with regret. Now, I should note that a life that you love doesn't mean that it has to be perfect because there is no such thing as perfection. Because like I said already, you're a human, you're sometimes going to feel tired and challenged and stressed and frustrated, but that is a part of life because life is full of unpredictable surprises, ups and downs, challenges. Sometimes our roads are going to be rocky. Sometimes they're going to be smooth, but even still, how do you want to show up while you're experiencing this journey and all those obstacles and where do you actually want to go? So before we dig into this workshop or all the information I'm going to be sharing with you today, I want to mention this quote by Annie Dillard who said, how we spend our days is of course how we spend our lives and what we do with this hour and that one is what we are doing. So I want you to take a moment to think about the way that you spend your days. Do you use your time well? Do you get what you want to get done? And is it supporting you on this quest to live a life you love? So before we even go further, I just want to introduce you to this important coaching concept that underlies everything that I do in my life, in my business, in every single area. I'm not even kidding. And it all has to do with you understanding the power of your thoughts. So let me take you on a trip back in time to my first day as a psych student. It was over 25 years ago. Now, I was seriously gobsmacked to learn this all important lesson back then. And I actually don't even know how I survived the previous 20 years without knowing this information. Now, do you know how Oprah talks about aha moments? Well, this was an aha moment for me. And it felt like this light bulb was going on, like one moment the room was dark and suddenly it was super bright and the truth was staring me in the face. And it was this. Your thoughts impact your feelings, which impact your actions, which impact your results. Now, I don't want to deep dive too much into this because I could probably speak for hours about the power of your mindset. And there are plenty of episodes that cover this very topic on my Dream Big My Friend podcast. I just want to bring this back to how this impacts you today as a human trying their very best every day and aiming to live a life that you hopefully love, even with all its ups and downs and flaws and all. So here's the thing. It is what you think about your life, your thoughts about it, that will determine how you feel about your life and consequently impact your actions and ultimately your results. You can actually just decide right now that I love my life. I really do. You could just decide that you're lucky. You could decide that you're blessed. You could just decide these things are true. 
Now, this would actually be the easiest way to get to this desire or goal of yours to live a life you love. And I want you to know that you actually have this option available to you right now. Like, not of, of course, not all of us are ready to take it or are ready to embrace it, and that's okay. As long as you know that this option is available to you. And if you aren't ready, that is okay because I want you to know that everything's fine. In this workshop, I'm going to help you get to this place where you love your life by showing you the five things that are probably getting in your way right now. Now, most of us aren't ready to always embrace this idea that we can just choose to think whatever we want about our life and we can choose to think it's fantastic because we recognize that that we sometimes need to make a few changes in our life first and change some of the way that we do things and maybe even the way that we spend the time that we have at our disposal. So I want you to know that this feeling of discontent that you might have is totally okay because this is actually what inspires change. As a life coach, I always recommend doing a really deep and honest life audit because that is how you can continue to move forward in your life in the direction that you want to go. You need to know where are you now, where do you want to go, and what do you want to do differently in order to get to the place where you want to get to. Now, I should probably point out that this place might be actually less of a tangible destination, like a particular spot, and more of a sense of accomplishment or of a feeling of fulfillment and peace. It's just like a feeling, like that's when you know that you're in a good place, when you feel happy and when you feel at peace and you actually reach a place in yourself, like inside yourself, where you feel like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. And I sincerely do love the life that I have created. So let's look right now. So I have to apologize. I've taken some time to set a foundation to this workshop because all those things that I've covered so far are going to help you really embrace everything else that I speak about in the, in the rest of the workshop. So let's look at the obstacle. Obstacle number one that might be preventing you from living a life you love. And that obstacle is a lack of a plan or organization. So one of the ways that we make it super difficult to reach our goals and to reach a life that we love, like get to that place where we actually feel like we're loving what we're doing, is by not having a plan of how we intend to achieve what we want to achieve And therefore, we don't use the time that we have at our disposal wisely. So maybe our dreams are still really wishy-washy. Maybe they're not quite defined. Maybe we haven't yet broken them down into baby steps, so they seem too big and overwhelming, and therefore we'll feel tempted to give up before we even try. But without a plan, so you need to have a plan, we're a little bit like a boat drifting aimlessly out to sea. And it does, it reminds me of the Alice in Wonderland quote. So she said, Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here, asked Alice. She was asking the cat, the Cheshire cat. And the cat replied, well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Well, Alice then said, I don't much care where. So the cat replied, then it doesn't matter which way you go. And Alice added as an explanation, well, as long as I get somewhere. And the cat said, oh, you're sure to do that if only you walk long enough. So here's the thing. How can you actually decide what you want to do each day if you actually don't know where you're going? And how do you get there when you don't know where there is? So think about all the times that you've planned a road trip, like you possibly plot a specific course if you don't actually know where you're going. You need to know what your ultimate goal is and then make a plan to get there. So without a plan or without being organized, it's super easy just to waste your time each day. It's super easy to spend hours watching TV even though you could be spending your time more wisely. It's super easy to wake up and have no real idea what your intentions are for the day when you haven't actually made a clear plan that you can work towards. And when I speak about organization, it means that you're prepared and organized enough to take action on your goals. After all, so a goal without a plan is just a wish and failing to plan is planning to fail. But in order to carry out a plan, you need to be organized. So let's just say, for example, if part of living a life that you love involved doing exercise, daily exercise. This means that you actually own and have runners that you can wear to go for a jog. Like if jogging is what you want to do, it means that you know where they are. It means that you've pulled them out of a cupboard and you've set them aside, maybe beside the front door. And you also know exactly when you plan to do this exercise. So maybe you want to go for a run every morning at 6 a.m. Maybe you want to go to the gym at seven o'clock every night, but this is actually scheduled into your diary. And if you have kids, this means that you've organized for someone to mind them so that you can go and do this exercise so you can carry out that goal. You have logically thought through all the steps required to carry out your goal. And you not only have a plan, you're organized enough to carry out your plan. So let's just say uh, your dream life involves you growing a side hustle business. Now, it's not only important to have a vision for what that side hustle business ultimately looks like, what, like what you want to grow it to be. You also need to have a plan of attack and be prepared to carry out that plan. 
Like, when do you plan to work on that business idea? Like, I know when I was growing my online business and I was still working during the day and I was still a busy mom, I needed to carve out some quiet time to do that, to actually focus on my business every day. For me, the most feasible option was 5 to 7 a.m. every morning before the kids would wake up and I would do it again at 8 to 10 a.m. when the house was sort of quiet and the kids were prepping for bed. So these were the hours that I set and then I decided, so I made a decision that I would devote them to my business and I didn't let anything else get in my way, like unless it was obviously a true emergency. And if anything did pop up, like if I had a commitment that I couldn't reschedule, I'm sure I wouldn't have a commitment at that time of the day, but maybe I had a sick child or I had a really restless night. I nonetheless was committed. I was committed to making up those hours that I dedicated originally, but I was going to do it at some point during the week. Because the truth is, even when you have like the best plan, like the plan feels so solid, things can still go amiss. And if your current plan doesn't work for you, you need to be willing to change the plan rather than changing your goal. So like stay focused and be willing to be flexible and you can have a plan of action, but sometimes your plan might need some adjusting depending on your situation. So just be prepared for that. So first you need to have that goal or that dream. You have to envisage it. Then you make a plan and then you do it. So if you want to live a life that you love, just be open to falling in love with planning and organizing your day and be willing to be flexible. And now for the second reason or the second obstacle that prevents us from living a life we love. Number two, okay, I bet you a lot of you guys are going to put your hand up for this because I know that I definitely used to put my hand up for procrastination and not taking action. This is a massive one. Now, you'll probably note that in the previous obstacle I mentioned, you know, we need to have a dream and then we plan and then we do it. Okay, doing it is almost like the most important part of that equation, because as you've probably discovered in life, you can plan and organize something all day. Like you can come up with the most fantastic, elaborate plan. But if you don't actually carry it out and do it, then all that planning and organization has gone to waste. Procrastination is simply the act of delaying or postponing something. So this is when we do have a plan or we have some tasks that we intend to carry out, like the intentions there, but then we allow procrastination to get the better of us. We think, oh, like, okay, we can just do it later. I'll just do it later. I don't actually feel like doing it right now or I'm not in the mood. So can you see, my friend, how this will definitely get in the way of you living a life you love? Like a hundred percent. Even if your life and your dream life is just to have a simple, calm and peaceful life. If you aren't dedicated to that goal and dedicated to carrying out the plan that you've created, probably not going to get there. You're going to end up frustrated and annoyed and stressed. Because if you find yourself constantly putting off the important tasks that you've set over and over and over again, it's going to be an obstacle that's going to keep you stuck. We need to come up with a plan to get over it. Now, you are not alone if you're a procrastinator. In fact, I think that most people will definitely agree to procrastinating to some degree often. But the key to controlling this destructive habit, and I hate hate to say the word destructive, but it really does destroy your chances of achieving your dreams because it really is impossible to achieve a dream if you're doing zero, like you're doing nothing to to work towards it when you're self-sabotaging yourself. But the first step to getting over this is to actually just to recognize when you are procrastinating. A lot of us don't even realize when we're doing it, but when you recognize, that is the first step. So give yourself a pat on the back when you recognize it because that's step number one. You also need to understand why it happens and then take active steps to manage your time better. So in a nutshell, you procrastinate when you're putting off important things that you know you should be focusing on right now because you decided it was an important task and yet you're ignoring it. And if you're honest with yourself, you probably do know and recognize when you're procrastinating. Now, whatever form your procrastination comes in, because there's different forms, you need to learn to identify it. So I'm going to offer you here some useful indicators that will help you know when you're procrastinating. So here are some examples. It's when you fill your day with low priority tasks from your to-do list, okay, rather than focusing on the important ones. Or it's actually when you sit down to write your high priority list, you've got it on your list, and then you almost instantly want to do something different. Like you want to go and make a cup of coffee. You just want to focus on something else rather than focusing on what is on your list and truly important. Or it's when you leave an item on your to-do list for way too long, even though that you know it should have been done like yesterday or last week. Or it's when you regularly say yes to unimportant tasks that other people ask you to do and you fill your time with, 
I'm not going to say crap, but you know what? It's things that aren't important. Like in the grand scheme of things, these things aren't important. Rather than actually working on the important tasks that you've identified and they've made it to your list. And it's also, this is another biggie. It's when you're waiting for the right mood or the right time to tackle an important task. Like you let your feelings control your actions. So rather than like just knowing, like I already know myself, I don't have to wait till I feel like it. I just do it. And when I take the action, I actually feel better. So the secret to success is definitely doing things even when you don't feel like it. But when you are stuck in this mode of, well, I don't feel like it yet, so I don't want to do it, that is another form of procrastination. Now, I could probably talk for hours about how to beat procrastination, but as long as you understand that the first step is to recognize when you are doing it, because honestly, there are probably people who are oblivious to their procrastinating ways. And the next question to ask yourself is, why do you actually think you're procrastinating? Like it's a genuine, sincere question. Like, do you know why? Like, be honest with yourself and just know that there's no right or wrong answer here. Like, it's not a quiz that I'm like asking you and say, I'm going to be in trouble if I say this. You need to be honest with yourself. Like, it's okay to say, well, I'm procrastinating because I'm actually really scared to take that step. I'm feeling a lot of fear. Or maybe I actually don't even know how to do that step. And that's why I'm staying stuck because I haven't actually worked out how to do it. Or maybe you aren't even looking forward to the potential discomfort that you might feel by stretching yourself outside your comfort zone. Maybe you're a perfectionist and you hate the idea that you might fall short of your expectations so you don't even bother to try it all. Or maybe you're just feeling a little bit lazy. Sometimes sometimes we're lazy. Now, I have to note there's a difference between you're not lazy when you need a rest, okay? We all need downtime. Our minds sometimes need a break. But that is different, okay? That rest that comes from like exerting yourself stretching yourself and then eating a chance to like recuperate and rest and relax. That's different from like actively avoiding what you need to do. Lazy is a little bit like, you know what you need to do, but you just can't be bothered. Like, have you ever felt that way? Maybe you also don't want it bad enough. And the idea of staying stuck feels actually better than the idea of facing your fears or feeling uncomfortable, even though everything that you want could be lying on the other side of that fear. So as, what I'm trying to say here is that there's actually so many different forms of procrastination. And as long as you know that there are ways to beat it, you can, like you can get an accountability partner, you can set yourself rewards to motivate yourself. You can make sure that you focus on the things that you need to do first. You actually focus on it first before you even begin to tackle anything else. But generally speaking, it does come down to a decision. Like you need to make a decision to stop making excuses and realizing that your life is short and time is precious and your dreams are never, ever, ever going to just fall into your lap. If procrastination is something that you're experiencing in your own life, I want you to ask yourself, like, in what way is this impacting you? Now, be honest, like pull out a journal, write down your thoughts. And secondly, what can you do differently? Like, I feel like you will have the answer to that question if you just ask, what do you need to do differently? Put on your detective hat and analyze all the different areas of your life where procrastination is holding you back. Would it be immediately obvious to someone else if they were to look at you? Like if I was to come over to your house and like, and just observe you for the day, like watch how you spend your days. Do you think that it would be immediately obvious to me what needs to be changed and what the problem is? Like what would a stranger say appears to be the real problem for you? And how do you think that you overcome those issues that you might be having, those procrastination issues? Remember, you are either part of the problem or you're part of the solution, my friend. So if you are a procrastinator, come up with a game plan to get over it, okay? Because there is a way. When you want something, maybe you need more clarity with your goal, but when you want something enough and you realize that the the clock is ticking right now, that often gives us the kick up the butt that we need. And now for the third reason, an obstacle that prevents us from living a life we love. It is when you put your power in other people's hands. So, oh my gosh, my friend, if you learn only one thing from today's workshop, like if you walk away earning, learning one thing, I want it to be this. You and only you have the power to change your own life. Expecting other people to make you happy or make your dreams come true is a real recipe for disaster. You, my friend, are responsible for your own life and for your own happiness. And this is why I mentioned early on all those things that might be standing in the way of your life, the living a life that you love. The answer was never going to be your family, your friends, your partner, your kids, all the people that you're connected with. The only thing that's stopping you right now from living a life you love is you. You are responsible for your own life. You're responsible for your own happiness. You get to decide how you want to live your life and how you want to approach all your obstacles, all the obstacles that you're facing along the way. 
it's time for you to take ownership for your life and to choose thoughts that support you on this amazing journey that we're so blessed to have. Now, I am a massive fan of affirmations and I'm going to offer you some affirmations that you could choose to embrace, okay, because this is all about putting the power back in your hands. You can simply choose to say to yourself, I am in charge of my own life. I'm the captain of my own ship. I do have a purpose. My life has meaning. I have something special to contribute to this world. I can and will follow my heart. I won't allow my fears to define my life. I will embrace my fears and do it anyway. I will do it scared. I will train my brain. I will train my mind. I will learn what I need to learn. I will feed and nourish my soul. I will never give up. I will just keep on trying. I am in charge of how I feel and I am in control of my days. Today, I will choose happiness. Today, I will choose how I want to think. Today, I will choose thoughts that serve me because I am the boss of my time. I put my energy into the things that matter to me and I won't waste my time comparing myself to others. I'm going to give myself permission to do what is right for me. I have the power to create change and I need to trust that I'm on the right path. I do trust that I'm on the right path. And I am at peace with who I am as a person. I allow myself to be who I am without judgment because I love and accept and forgive myself fully. I give myself the love and attention and care that I deserve. I will share my talents and gifts with the world. And I will make a difference in this world simply by existing it, just by being me. So here's the thing, you need to accept responsibility for your actions. And I say this with kindness and love for you because I want the best for you. You need to learn to be accountable for your own results. You need to take ownership of your mistakes. The best day of your life is when you decide that this is it. I am in charge. I don't need to apologize for anything. I don't need to make excuses anymore because those excuses do not serve me. And as Suman Ray once so wisely said, If you don't take ownership of your actions, your actions will eventually own you because this is your story. This is the book that you are writing each day. So what do you want your story to look like? Do you want to be the hero or do you want to be the victim in your story? No one is coming to save you, my friend. It's time to own your own decisions. Stop blaming others for your problems. Stop pointing fingers and stop relinquishing your responsibility to other people. Because here's the thing. The moment you accept responsibility for everything in your life is the moment that you gain the power to change anything in your life. As Brené Brown once so wisely said, if you own your story, you get to write your ending. So if you own your story, why not just own it? This means that you're willing to be open and honest and vulnerable with yourself. You stop asking other people what they think you should do with your life. They don't have that answer. You were born with those dreams inside your heart. They don't have to understand your dreams. Only you do. You need to own them. You have to embrace them. You need to be willing to take ownership of your own decision making. You need to be willing to accept responsibility for everything that has come to pass and accept it for what is. So forgive yourself and show yourself some grace. Like even if you've come to this point in time, you're like, I wish I had done things differently. Well, the truth is we can't turn back the hands of time, but we can just assume that everything that we've gone through in our life so far has led us to this moment, that you're listening here to this workshop and that you can use all that experience to take you where you want to go. You can turn your mess into a message and use it to take you to the next step. Like, and there's another great quote that I love. It's by Stephen Covey. He said, I'm not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. And if you've made some decisions that you haven't loved, that is okay. Like I said, you need to love and forgive yourself and show yourself some grace because you are a human. And when you know better, you can do better. And that is what you can do now moving forward. If you want to have peace, it's up to you to create that peace, flaws and all, okay? Because we're still going to make mistakes along the way. And if you want to have happiness, it's up to you to create that happiness, flaws and all, okay? Knowing that there's still going to be obstacles along the way. And if you want to create a new business, it's up to you to do so and never, ever give up and knowing that you're going to experience challenges along the way. So chase your dreams with relentless determination because you hold the power in your hands. Take it one day at a time because remember, how you spend your days is how you spend your life. And above all, remember to take ownership of your thoughts and responsibility for your actions. Even if your goals are really simple, like it could be simply to nurture a family that you love, but that is still a worthy goal. And remember, you have to take the ownership back in your hands. So even when the people that you love don't show up in ways that you particularly care for, how do you want to show up? Like consider it in those moments that are most challenging. How do you want to show up? It's a question for all of us. How do we want to show up every single day when we're presented with the challenges that we're inevitably going to face? And now for the fourth obstacle, 
that gets in our way to creating a life that we love. It's thinking thoughts that don't serve you. So now that you know that you have the power to navigate your life in any direction you choose and that you are the captain of your own ship, it's important that you get your thoughts into order. So one of the ways that we sabotage our efforts is where we don't keep our thoughts clear and rational. Instead, we allow them to like be really dramatic. We blow them out of proportion. We overthink things and we take things personally. And maybe we just get lost in that constant mind chatter. It's almost like you're a hamster running on a hamster wheel and going nowhere. Like it's actually starting to drive you crazy. But remember what I mentioned right at the beginning of this workshop. Your thoughts impact your feelings, which impact your actions, which impact your results. So now that you know this is true and that every circumstance in this world is just neutral, like it has no meaning until you give it meaning with the thoughts that you choose, I want to ask you, are you choosing thoughts that serve you? Many people hold themselves back by overthinking things or just filling their minds, like I said, with unnecessary and unhelpful chatter. Simply thoughts that just actually make them feel really bad or they don't move them forward. And it's really hard to be proactive and to follow through on your plans and to stay organized when you're, not that your thoughts are sabotaging you, but when they're not helping you get to where you want to go. You need to feel confident and you need to feel strong and you need to feel resilient in order to like achieve this life that you love. And the way that you feel those things is by thinking thoughts that make you feel confident and make you feel strong and make you feel resilient and make you feel at peace. Those feelings are going to come from the thoughts that you're thinking. And we often forget that we can just choose to think whatever we want about any situation. We can choose to think that the events that are happening in our life aren't happening to us, like we're a victim, but they're happening for us, okay, that they serve us in some way, that these obstacles are strengthening your will, that they're helping you grow, that there's a golden nugget contained in those challenges that we're experiencing. Because remember, we can choose to think whatever we want to think. So why wouldn't we choose thoughts that serve us? And does it serve you to think that people are out to get you or that it's too hard or that I am not good enough or that I'm never going to get to my goals? In a nutshell, no, it doesn't. It doesn't serve you to think those thoughts. Now, remember what I said before, your thoughts are the first step of a domino effect that impacts everything that follows your feelings, your actions and results. So if you think that you're not good enough, then you're going to feel crap and you're probably not going to take proper action and you're consequently going to have crappy thoughts. So to change your results, so results are what you want to achieve in your life, to have different results in your life, you need to change your actions, which come from the feelings that you're feeling, which come from your thoughts. Now, I know it probably sounds like I'm going like on and on about this particular thing, but it is so important for you to understand when you wake up tomorrow and you have a thought that doesn't serve you, just say to yourself, it's just a thought. It might not be true. I can choose something different. I can just choose to think a different thought. Okay. That thought that I'm thinking doesn't serve me. It might not even be true. So I'm just going to pick a new one. And this actually takes time and practice on a daily basis to get to a point where your thoughts feel clear and supportive. And I should probably say that even though I know all these tools, I have a degree in psychology, I'm a trained life coach, even still it takes me every day. I still have to practice. I still, those thoughts sometimes pop up that don't serve me. I need to remind myself. I need to work on myself. It's a daily practice. And I can just imagine that this is something that I'll keep on practicing for the rest of my life because as a human, we're sometimes just going to think weird and unhelpful thoughts. Like they're going to pop into our mind and we need to remind ourselves that we are in control. Okay. We get to choose what we think. If different thoughts pop into our head, we can just say those thoughts aren't helpful. It's really interesting that I'm considering that, but it doesn't have, doesn't mean that it's true. I can let it go. Okay. Cause I'm not going to gain anything from, you know, dwelling on that thought. I need to focus on things that actually make me feel good about myself, that make me feel confident. Or if I am having a totally normal human moment, like I'm feeling angry or stressed or frustrated, I can instead say to myself, it's actually okay for me to feel those emotions. I'm just going to feel them. I'm not going to dwell on them forever, but it's okay. Like it's okay to have moments where you don't feel the best because remember life is 50 50 and you can experience negative emotion along the way, but don't judge yourself for it. Don't think that it means anything other than you are just a human and moving forward. You can choose to think different thoughts. Okay. You can be kind to yourself when you're feeling crap or stressed or frustrated, choose kindness rather than beating yourself up and treating yourself like you would your worst enemy. Like the way that we sometimes speak to ourselves isn't helpful And we would never speak that way to a stranger. So just be conscious of the words that you're choosing to tell yourself on a daily basis. Are they lifting you up or are they dragging you down? 
And now for the fifth obstacle. This is the final one, okay? The thing that holds us back from living a life we love is losing sight of the big picture. So this is when we sabotage our efforts by focusing on the things that don't really matter rather than taking a step back and looking at the grand picture. So Robert Cheek was the one who said, learn to see the big picture. Oftentimes we get tunnel vision and lose sight of the big picture and what we're really trying to accomplish. Now, once again, this requires that you think about what your big picture goal is. Like it comes back to what we're talking about right at the beginning. What will make you feel like in the end that you had lived a good life? What will matter in the grand scheme of things? Like really matter? Will it really matter something that you're focused or worried about in one year or 10 years, 50 years, 100 years? Like what would your future self want you to focus on right now? What actions can you take and what thoughts can you think that will help you get to your future version of yourself that you are hoping to become? Because remember, we're all in the process of becoming someone. Like I know that you are who you are, but we're still always growing. We're still always evolving and we're still always becoming. Now, if we're impacted by the actions and decisions and thoughts that we take and make on a daily basis, if that is true, where are your actions and decisions and thoughts going to take you? Like if you were doing everything you are now, where is it inevitable that you'll end up? Is it where you want to go? Okay. Do you need to make some changes or are you doing all the right things now? Are you doing things that are actually self-sabotaging you? that aren't taking you to a place that you particularly care to go to. Like if your future self could speak to you right now, what would he or she say? What advice would he or she give you? What would they want you to be doing today? What would they say to you? Oh my gosh, can you stop doing that and start doing this instead? This is what you really need to do because this is going to help you get to where you want to go. Now, when I'm saying these things to you, is anything popping up for you? Like, do you recognize what you need to stop doing? Do you recognize what you need to continue doing and the things that you need to start doing? Like, does the answer come up for you? Because when we speak about the future self, it's almost like, I know that you have to ask a hypothetical version of yourself that doesn't yet exist, but trust me, just give it a go and ask those questions. What actions would your future self want you to take today? Get out a piece of paper and actually just write it down, write it down because life is so short and your time is precious. And I feel like you already have all those answers inside of you. You just need to be willing to ask them, be brave enough to listen to the answer and just actually to take it on board because it's up to you. Remember, the power lies in your hands. And that is it, my friend. I've just shared with you the five things that prevent us from living a life that we love. Now, once again, they are. So obstacle number one was a lack of a plan or organization. Obstacle two was procrastination and not taking action. Obstacle three was putting your power in other people's hands rather than understanding that you've got the power. Obstacle four was thinking thoughts that don't serve you. Obstacle five was losing sight of the big picture. And that is it. Okay. Like if you were to finally have come up with a plan and be organized, stop procrastinating and start taking action. Realize that the power is in your hands, that you are responsible for your own life and to start to think that thoughts that actually serve you, that are helpful and to keep the big picture in mind. Those are almost like the secret ingredients to living a life you love. Like it is that simple. Now, I should probably note that just because I said it was simple doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, okay? We're still going to be facing obstacles. You're still going to be facing challenges. You're just a totally normal human on this journey in life, feeling both positive and negative emotions. But it really is that simple. You just need to practice and take those actions and just do it on a continual basis because it is within your reach. I've almost like shown a flashlight on the obstacles. Okay, so you can't say that you're in the dark anymore. Like I've let you know what they are. And remember what I said earlier on, when you know better, you can do better. And this is your chance, my friend. You can now go off and do better with your life because I sincerely want the best for you. I want you to live an amazing life, however simple your goals are or however big and audacious they are. Whatever you want, it is your time to go for it. Because as I said, your dreams will never just fall into your lap. It's it's up to you to go and chase them. Now, before we go, I just want to share with you quickly some ways that I can help support you moving forward. Now, unlike some workshops that you might attend where the presenter like puts forth this really expensive course that they want to sell and they like push this product into you, I actually have a different approach. I recommend first consuming all the free stuff that I have to offer you. Go and read my blog posts, listen to the podcast where I'm always offering valuable free tips to help you live your life better. And then 
So only then, once you've decided that you like the way that I teach and the philosophy in which I embrace my life, only then take a peek at the courses that I have to offer you because I think it's really important that we're both on the same wavelength because then you'll get so much more out of the courses that I have to offer you. So you probably will notice immediately when it comes to my courses and offerings that they're priced so affordably. This is something that perhaps goes against the grain when it comes to good business sense, especially since I know that the value that my students receive after going through the content is worth tenfold what they pay, but that's just me. My goal has just always been to provide an insane amount of value without burning a hole in your pocket. So one of the best ways that I can support you is via my bundle. I have the Ultimate Life Revamp Coaching Vault. It is a bundle of my 10 best courses and roadmaps for go-getters. These are already massive, massive courses, and I have literally included 10 of the best, like 10 big courses in one bundle. So the first course that you'll find inside the bundle is the Fearless You Project. I absolutely love this course. It's an in-depth course that approaches the topic of fear and how to move beyond it in the most genius way possible. So rather than wasting time making excuses, you'll be given all the tools you need to begin actioning it immediately, like addressing your fears. Not only is this strategy like super effective, it also doesn't require that you're confident in advance. Like I'm not kidding. You can come into the course feeling like the most unconfident person in the world and exit it knowing exactly how to embrace courage with grace and ease. Because as a life coach with your best interests at heart, I always make sure that all my courses only contain the most important tools and strategies to help you see a dramatic improvement in your life, especially when it comes to action taking, no matter what your fears are. And now for the second course included inside this bundle, which is the invisible crown, which is be the best version of yourself in 90 days. So I created this course. It is so massive. It includes so many bonuses inside. I created it with this vision in mind, like I wanted it to be the very best, most in-depth personal development course on the market because after decades of working in the personal development field as a life coach, I've got my degree in psychology, I just incorporated all the most effective tools and resources here in the course. And put simply, your invisible crown is the quickest tool to help you get to where you are now to where you want to be. And now for the third course included in the bundle, it is the magic wand, which is how to achieve your dream goal in 90 days. So here in this course, you're going to find the exact tools and the exact process that I used while coaching private clients over the last 20 years. Now, the di- biggest difference between like my one-on-one coaching that I used to do and this course itself is that my private clients used to pay me $150 per hour for their sessions. This was 20 years ago, and I literally threw everything that I knew about coaching and how to coach yourself into this course so that you had those tools yourself. So this was actually originally a companion tool or a companion course to the Invisible Crown. So while the Invisible Crown is all about getting your mindset and thinking right, the Magic Wand is all about taking action and getting the doing part right so that you can make magic happen. And now for the next course included inside the bundle, it's Manifest Money and a Life of Abundance, which is a no BS guide to the law of attraction. So the reason I created this course is that I actually genuinely understand why people struggle with implementing the principles of law of attraction and manifestation in their life. Like it is really confusing and experts often talk about different parts of the puzzle or focus only on a few aspects of the manifestation process while glossing over the other parts that are just as important, probably even more so important. So my goal was to just strip away all those woo-woo aspects of the law of attraction in this book and course and just make manifesting money and a life of abundance as tangible and actionable as possible. And that was my goal. And I'm pretty sure I delivered on it because I reference that course all the time myself. It's something that I need to remind myself in order to keep a clear head. And you have to understand when people talk about manifesting things, manifesting is really just the same as creating or bringing things to life. But I'm not going to go off on a tangent now, but I definitely love that subject. And now for the next course that's included inside the bundle. It is the Ultimate Life Audit Plan, a comprehensive plan to create an amazing life that even you are envious of. So this life audit sort of forces you to step back and take a comprehensive, very honest look at your life from a bird's eye view, as opposed to trying to make sense of it when you're stressed and deep in the trenches, which is like it's impossible to do an audit from that spot. And I love that it can be used over and over again. I use it myself twice a year to track the progress of my life and to steer you in the right direction. And in case you're wondering what a life audit even means, it's when you step back and evaluate everything that you've achieved in your life so far and work out what do you need to do differently in order to achieve the long-term results that you are after. So this product, the Ultimate Life Audit Plan, will help you effectively analyze what is and isn't working in your life and devise a new strategy designed to help you achieve your life goals because that is what I am all about. 
And now for the next course included in Science Bundle. I'm sorry, I've actually just lost count now, but this one is Create a Life You Love, a strategic roadmap to achieving your dreams when you have no idea what to do. So I know there's a lot of dreamers out there who know that they want more, but they didn't necessarily know what more means. This course is all about discovering and getting more clarity on your passion and purpose in life. And I know that when I first created it, so this is actually a course creation that stems back. It first started before it was a video course. It was like created 20 years ago because I actually wanted to get this content out to schools. Like I think it's something that everyone needs to know. We absolutely need to know how to follow our hearts and to achieve our dreams and create a life you love really aims to fill in those blanks. If there's any confusion about what sort of sets your heart on fire. And now for the next course included inside the bundle, another big one. It's a mindful living master course, which is a roadmap for living life with more intention. I am definitely all about intentional living. I think that we sometimes need a reminder to live life with more intention. But if you're looking for more peace and purpose and mindfulness and understanding or just a clarity on your life, this course is going to help you get there. And now for the next product, which is actually an ebook. This is Life is an Experiment, 100 Experiments to Change Your Own Life. So I love this quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, all life is an experiment. The more experiments you make, the better. And that is definitely my philosophy. I think it's important to be willing to do things differently, to step outside your comfort zone, because that's how we learn to grow is by stretching ourselves. And this is a 300 page ebook. It's a compilation of a hundred life experiments or what I could simply consider to be simple dares. Okay. Things are going to take you outside your comfort zone. They're going to make you feel more awake and alive in this world. It definitely forces you to step outside your comfort zone, but that's what we often need to do to get over our fears. We need to do things differently, start to learn to have fun in our life again. And now for the next product included inside this bundle. It's the Ultimate Journal Prompts Bible. So I personally am seriously so obsessed with journaling. I do it every single day. I think it's important for all of us to discover the power of journaling. It feels so therapeutic. It's almost like performing a daily brain dump. I do it all the time and writing in your journal is just like emptying the contents of a disorganized bag out onto the table because once your thoughts are out in the open, you can move on to discarding the rubbish, the stress, the negative thoughts and working out what you need to do in order to have a healthier and calmer and happier mind. And this is where the Ultimate Journal Prompts Bible is really a life-changing lifesaver because you're going to find these journal prompts inside that truly have the power to work magic in your life because I know that by asking yourself really important questions, that is how you find amazing answers. Okay, you've got to ask the questions first. And now for the final product that you are going to find inside this messy bundle. It's another ebook and this one is called 50 Truth Bombs to Change Your Life and What Will It Take for You to Understand? So this coaching guide is quite different from all the other personal development books. It focuses less on what do you need to do or change to make your life super fabulous and more on what you need to understand in order to make your life more manageable and special. So if you struggle with self-doubt or with a lack of direction, this book might just be the wake-up call that you need. And if you always find that you're fighting things rather than living in peace and going with the flow, this book book actually highlights 50 truth bombs that you need to understand in order to free yourself from that constant pain, suffering, and torment, that cycle that we sometimes get stuck into. And that, my friend, is pretty much it. They're the 10 massive courses and products that you're going to find inside the Ultimate Life Revamp Coaching Vault. Obviously, you can always purchase things individually if there's only one or two that that catch your eye, but I also wanted to give you that option of offering the bundle as it is a way of saving quite a bit on some amazing courses. But I just want to say, all in all, whether you choose to take a course of mine or not, I still sincerely want the best for you. I hope that you go and create a life that you love, especially now that you know the five things that prevent many humans from living a life that they love. I've shared them to you in this workshop I am cheering for you from my own little corner in the world. I'm here in Sydney, Australia. I do hope sincerely from the bottom of my heart that after listening to this workshop, you go off and make some changes, changes in your life that are going to take you where you want to go. Because this is it, my friend. You have one life and that one life is so precious and time is so precious. And how you spend your days is how you spend your life. So focus on it just one day at a time. Get really clear on what your dreams are. Eliminate those obstacles and go out there and do whatever you need to do to live a life you love. 
Decide right now that you are worthy of a life you love. You can just decide to love your life, the one that you have right now. Because when we feel grateful, when we feel blessed, when we feel lucky, it is actually so much easier to love the life you have right now. So take care as always. You know that I'm here for you. I love and appreciate you all. And until next time, dream big, my friend. Thank you so much for listening. If you loved this episode, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you really loved it, you can show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. For more inspiration, head over to dreambigmyfriend.com where you will find even more content for all the dreamers out there. Until next time, dream big, my friend.